Un aplauso, otro aplauso, por favor. Yo también lo Bravo, bravo, bravo. No hay suficientes aplausos. Oh, bueno, ahora vamos uno por uno. Tenemos acá a Michelle Rodríguez. Hola, ¿cómo estás? Muchísimo gusto. Hola. Armando, a Cristian. No sé dónde están Gerardo y Iván, perdón. Acá vienen los otros dos. Y creo que también estamos esperando a Juan Pablo. Ok, the cinematographer, Juan Pablo. I apologize for that. Ok, so we have... Very important. I, I, I would like to bring up our producers, Manette Louie, Eder Campos, and Gabby Maid, who are here from Mexico. Let's just have a whole party. Let's do yes. it. What a privilege. So why don't we start, Heidi, if you can uh, share with us, number one. How did you get inspired by Gerardo and Ivan's story? Well, we met in a bar many years ago in a wine bar in the Lower East Side on my street. And Ivan was uh, working as a cook and uh, Gerardo as a bartender at, we decided it was Barrio Chino, ¿verdad? Sí. Si. Um, and because there was many restaurants and stuff, but that's, we, I remember they were working there. And um, they came in one night and uh, I like to, I would, at, the, at that point I was speaking more Spanglish than Spanish. Ahora hablo mucho mejor. But, um, and I like to dance the salsa and have a good time. And they came in one night and we like became friends like anybody does. And, um, and then we became a real friendship over many, many years. And about six or seven years into our friendship, um, I had a film with Rachel Grady uh, at the Sundance Film Festival called Detropia about my hometown. And the guys were like, we've never been to the mountains. So we'd love to come and be part of the crew. So that'd be so great. So they came out and weirdly, everybody in Sundance thought they were celebrities and kept inviting them to parties because they were the <laughs> they best have celebrity men. style. It happens everywhere, I guess. I was like, what's going on? They're like, oh, we got invited to this. I was like, can I come? Um, so it was a funny, that was a funny thing, but um, it was great. And then the last night before they left, we sat down and it was like six or seven years into our friendship and they told me their life story. And uh, I had, and, and, every, and everything you saw on the screen was what they told me. Um, and I was astonished and touched and confused and overwhelmed and it started this idea. Um, it started an idea that became a conversation, which became a collaboration, which became a documentary, which became something else. Um, and it was or very organic over many, many years. And um, so that's then the result is, is what, what you saw tonight. So that's the long way of answering that. And for those of you that don't know Heidi, so she has an extensive career in documentary filmmaking. But this is the first movie that you do, and it's actually mixed because we have part documentary, part fiction. Um, how did you decide to go that route? And when? How far along were you in the production of the movie? That's a tricky question. I don't remember. I was getting a sensation in the first year of shooting that I was shooting the third act of a movie. And then um, there's Minette. Yeah. Our producer and our leader, Annette Louie. Bravo, bravo, bravo. She had to put up with a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot to work with me on this. Wow. Uh, and um, so, so basically, I, I had the gut feeling that I was shooting the third act, that I'd missed, you know, I'd, I'd missed a lot, the childhood. The, and documentaries don't, you don't make documentary love stories. You're, you're not there with your camera the night somebody meets cute and falls in love and you don't go home with them and make chiles and nogada and like, it doesn't happen. So it's like to honor their story, I realized that I was making a documentary would, would, would not be excellent. It wouldn't tell the story, it wouldn't have the epic nature and, and it was better as a narrative and I had to accept it and either not make it or um, try to figure out how to, how to do the other thing. Um, and so that's, that was, but, but I continued to film them for many years, even after I knew, uh, well, after I started working on the script, because it, it just was that feeling that that was the right thing to do and that somehow the material would be important later on. Oh, but we've got nice. everyone here from Mexico, so they should have all the questions. I'm not going to talk anymore. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. We have here the actors tonight with us. Yes, never enough applause for these guys. So here's a question for Amanda and Christian. What motivated you guys to be part of this uh, this movie, this project? 
um, you always get excited when you when you read a good script and this was like like a romance movie so it's always exciting but this had something particular that it was between two men and it was about the love between them it was not about how they realize they're gay or how many faces how many problems he, they faced um socially you know it was about their love so i think that's a special i i don't remember a lot of mexican movies talking about talking about that so yeah maybe that was my main motivation para ti cristian <laughs> hey hi everybody good night um for me uh, it's, it's a story about love no uh, with 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 love you can make everything like this movie no para mí lo que me atrajo es justo esa historia de amor eh, el dignificar el esfuerzo de Iván y Gerardo y de lo que significa luchar por los sueños. I have a question for the two of you because I know that you're very good friends right now with Gerardo and Iván, but that's another thing that um, that I'm curious about. I would think that usually when you're doing a movie, you read like you said the script. But in many instances, you don't know uh, the people. Sometimes they're dead. Sometimes they're like super, super famous. And I think that most actors have to interpret or, or watch footage. So in your case, um, how far along in the movie were you when you actually met them? I mean, we were about to finish the movie. When we came <laughs> to New York to shoot the New York part, we finally get to meet them. So yeah, it was very adelante del proceso. Late in the process. And as actors, how do you feel? Do you feel now that you know them that you've interpreted them properly? Well, at first, we, at <laughs> least me, I really wanted to meet Ivan because I felt like a responsibility with him. But Heidi didn't let me do that. <laughs> I mean, you do. You, you, I did yeah. in the end because you, you, you forced this. You made yeah. It. Maybe I was pushing too hard. And I meet Ivan and Gerardo through a Skype. Yeah. We did a Skype call, and we under I understand that it wasn't, it it was it was not their job anymore. It was my job, and I, I didn't want to be um, violent with my process with them, mm -hmm. because they're like in another stage of their life. So it wasn't anymore. Uh, it was more of my job. So no sé cómo decirlo, pero lo tenía que hacer yo. Era como algo que ellos ya habían dado y lo tenía que haber hecho yo y trabajarlo conmigo. No sé, para ti, Cristian. Para mí, well, uh, the first time was I met Iván y Gerardo, I was very nervous, very, very nervous. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> so, because we have a big response, bueno, tenemos una gran responsabilidad porque tenemos que dignificar el, el esfuerzo y el trabajo de Iván y Gerardo, ¿no? Y yo todo el tiempo hablando con Heidi era estamos retratando la vida de unas personas entonces yo lo quiero hacer muy bien todo el tiempo pero no los conozco cómo entonces era seguir esa esencia no to him it was very important again to dignify the efforts that Gerardo and Ivan had made and he took like the responsibility very seriously because he was like they're two human beings and I want to do the best that I could possibly do, but how can I meet them? By the way, I think both of you did a great job. I actually see Ivan specifically in a different way after I saw the movie. Like there's something about uh, the way in Armando's eyes. So it, for me, it's the opposite. I know Ivan and then I see the movie and it changed the way that I see Ivan ever since I saw that movie. So, Michelle, what, hablanos de tu experiencia. What was your experience like uh, being part of this wonderful crew? Hi everybody, um, yo estoy muy contenta porque es una historia de amor, más allá del amor de pareja, creo que es eh, una historia de amor de pareja, de amor familiar, de amor de, de amigos y de amor al, al, a los sueños y a las pasiones y creo que eh, son grandes motivos que sin duda te invitan a mover tu vida y de lealtades que hacen que otras vidas se muevan contigo. Entonces, estoy muy contenta de estar en, en este proyecto que, que es tan especial para todos, porque son vidas reales. She says that for her it's a love story 
and it's a friendship and, and basically all these things fighting for your dreams and the things that make someone move. And I mean, in this case, geographically, but just inspire you to move that energy and inspire those around you. So for her, it has been an amazing experience to work and, and to get to know them in real life, you know, and this is a real life story. Um, una pregunta ahora voy con Juan Pablo. Uh, he's one of the best filmmakers in Mexico in general. I don't want to like specify and say Mexico nominated to the Oscar. In this film, there's like so many different tenses in time. Sometimes even some people get confused. Like it's not a linear movie. Um, that had to do a lot with you, the way you shot it, the lighting. What can you share about this experience? Well, it, it was more about, I, Heidi and I talk a lot about the process, how, how w we try to be a lot, uh, very intellectual about the, about the idea of the timeline, but also we had very clear that it was a nostalgic movie that, that uses the, the dreams and the memories as channels to travel. And, and we went that way, you know, like we explore the, the whatever the actors were giving in front of the camera, we, we tried to embrace it with, with, with the possibility to be there, to feel them, you know, to, to, to be on the camera. And, and I, I mean, I opened the, the, the whole movie, so the camera was on my shoulder and, and I was like feeling what they were giving. And Hyde was right next to me, you know, and we were like there, you know. The, the crew was big, but at, in the room we were like, I don't know, like five or six. And, and, and this intimacy, like, it, you know, like, it, it gives you something, it makes you sweat, and, and, and we were all there, like, and I think, I, I think that's, the, that's the way you see the movie. You change from the times and materials and places, and you still feel that you're there, and this, like, um, magic that, that the memory has, you know, that sometimes it, it gets fussy, and you arrive late, and you change memories and dreams, as, as the movie said, and, and to me, it's like believable, you know? I, I felt it that way when I was shooting it. I just also want to add that um, I think the combination of Juan Pablo, myself, and uh, Inat Sidi, our editor who couldn't be here tonight because she's in Israel, um, I think that that's this trifecta here in terms of post production was super. Uh, the conversations were among the three of us as well. And in terms of interpreting memory, you know, in the edit, a lot of we moved those memories around for months until they hit the exact moment. So, for example, the way that I wrote it was that when, when Ivan is caught in the dress by his father with Sandra, that was one scene. That was all supposed to play together. Um, and then it just needed to be broken up. It, eventually we realized it became obvious that there's a snippet here and that later on, when he's been found out by his mother, when he feels ashamed of himself, when he couldn't stand up, when he couldn't invite his mother in, it reminded him of something and remind him of the time that he was, you know, and so that needed to be separated. So there was a lot of work in the edit also with how to treat memory, um, how the brain works, how a smell or a sound takes you somewhere else with the tamales. So, so really it was also a conversation um, be between photography, direction, and, and editing in order to find out how to, uh, what was our c cinematic language for memory. La recherche de Tom Tardu, I remember, you know, the Madeline takes you to a whole novel. So now we have Ivan and Gerardo, and we're talking about this real life story. Yeah. It's so surreal every time I can see the movie over and over. What do you guys feel every time you see your life in a movie? I'm going to speak it in Spanish. I'm very nervous. Es, es una experiencia única. Es difícil, es difícil abrirse abrir el corazón y exponer tu vida um, en los términos que vieron en la movie, pero es un acto, es un acto de valor, de valentía que se necesita. He's saying that it's very hard to open yourself up with that kind of uh, uh, honesty and in the context that you saw in the movie, um, that it's a unique experience, but that he thought that it was needed and that it's also an act of courage. Yeah, it's, it's more necessary hoy que nunca. 
Y bueno, espero que toque los corazones de quien debe tocar y logremos algo juntos para mejor para mejorar la vida de millones de inmigrantes acá en los Estados Unidos. He's saying that he feels that it's a necessary film and that he hopes it reaches uh, the hearts or the people that it needs to so things can change here in the United States, which brings me to another point because yes, it's an epic tale of love and I think a universal, love is universal, but as a friend told me today, it's like a story in many stories. So Ivan, for example, you the other day were telling me how all the restaurant guys or many, when, when they see you out, it doesn't matter of, uh, you know, if they're, their sex orientation. They feel that this movie belongs to them. It belongs to the immigrants. What, what's your experience? It's not only one message. You know, there is many messages we try to share with the people. And I mean, I'm very happy. I'm very proud to Heidi, the actor, to everyone in the, in the movie. And like Gerardo say, the only thing is, um, voice and talk and if this can help to a millions of people we are in the same the same situation like us i mean this is my my dream and my surprise <laughs> i also read something the trade off do you think ha valido la pena has all the sacrifices you guys fight for love but has it been worth it it's like you had to trade that quest for love you had to give up so much ha valido la pena. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, these 20 years was many things in our life, you know, many sad things. But we are very, very, very happy with all the gifts from life, you know. I can realize one of my dreams was be a chef in New York, mm -hmm. have my own restaurants, support my family in Mexico my son, and I mean, I think is my dream. <laughs> I don't know, Heidi, because of the time, if the producers would like to add something and then we can open up for the public. I would love to hear from Edda or Edda and Gabby, our Mexican producers who, I have to say you guys, thank you. You worked miracles. Um, the locations we wanted, you made things happen that we couldn't afford, and the net, the three of you guys tolerated a lot of, of desires, demands, requests to you guys. And I, you know, they would say, don't show her the location. She's going to like it too much. And it's too expensive. And I would overhear them. I'd say, tu sabes que hablo español. Ay, estoy escuchando lo que están diciendo. What is this? Well, it's an old cinema. And it's from the 1940s, but they haven't opened it. And we can't find the owner. But it's amazing. I'm like, when can we go? Look at the old, the old pornography cinema that we turned into a club. And they'll, I mean, it was just like, they would see the look in my eye. And they'd be like, oh, we have to get it for her. And, it was like, these were gifts every single day. The producers are the unsung heroes of fiction film. The applause and you guys, for the producers. The producers make it happen. And, um, and I'm truly grateful. And I haven't said thank you enough, but I want to say thank you to all of you because this, well, everything you see on screen, what would we always say? Put the money on the screen. Put the money on the screen. Lunch has to be $6. Put the money on the screen. <laughs> and sometimes it was five fifty, and. So I just want to say, I think you should, yeah, what, what's your experience been uh, as, as producers on this project? It was torture. <laughs> it was torture. <laughs> but it was worth every second. Can you say that? Well, as an immigrant myself, I'm from Bolivia and I live in Mexico. This story touched my heart because it's really hard to be an immigrant, not only in the United States, but everywhere. Mm -hmm. We leave our heart with the place we were born, and we take half of our heart the to the place that we go and build a life. But even though you have your heart in two parts, so it's really hard to be an immigrant, it's like many of us. So that's why it was really important for me to tell this story, and I'm really, really grateful with the net and Buddy and Haiti to create this story, and of course, all of you guys because you allow us to 
to show how immigrants are. We are human beings with love, with, with, we need uh, family, we have like, we are fathers and son and daughters and we miss our life that we have there and we, we, <coughs> we are fighting to have like an entire life where we are. So we are fighting all the time and I really believe that immigrants are amazing and are huge fighters and I hope we, we find peace to work and to live and to travel and do what all uh, people need to do because that's what's life. And also, this movie is very important because love is love and it doesn't matter. Love is love. Yeah. I just want to add really quickly, I was totally kidding you. It was, it was torture, <laughs> but um, it was, it was you know, everybody always says when they work on movies, oh, I love the crew, I love the cast, it's a bunch of bullshit. This is not bullshit here. Like this, this crew and cast really love each other. We did have a really big crew completely unconventional production. We shot in five cities in Mexico plus New York City. We shot 39 days. There were like five different units. <laughs> it was crazy. Three shoots, pickups, um, nine months of editing. But you know, you can, <laughs> but you can see the love on the screen. You know, everyone from the PA to the craft service person to, you know, Yvonne and Gerardo and the actors, it, it was just it's through and through. There's love on the screen. Pues muchas gracias. So I'm going to open up to the audience. I don't know if there's anyone that would like to ask a question. What is the name of your restaurant so we can all come? Um, we are in Williamsburg. Uh, one is Zona Rosa and the other one is Mesa Coyoacán in Williamsburg too. Yeah. Uh, my question is for Heidi. After this experience, would you make another uh, dramatic film? Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes, I'll any, make another any, dramatic any plans film. so far? Yes, there's plans. There's things in the works. There's things being written. There's things being rewritten. There's conversations <laughs> happening. There's wheeling and dealing. No, there's no wheeling and dealing. Um, no, it, you know, it, it's like it is, I never wanted to make a narrative. This was out of, I wanted to tell my friend's story well and it needed to come this, this way. Uh, I never planned on it, but once you do it, if it goes well, it's, you, don't, you don't just say, no, I'm gonna close that door. I, I describe it to my friends and in, in my, my, fellow, my fellow documentarians. Um, I, I describe it as that dream you have when you live in New York City, we all have it once if you're here long enough, where like you open like a broom closet and there's like 6,000 square feet. <laughs> there's like another apartment that you're like, what? I didn't know. And so it's like that because so many stories I, don't, I decide not to tell because there's no archive footage, because there's no current day storyline, because I can't get access, because the character is really annoying in real life. Um, because, you know, there's a lot of reasons not to make a documentary and, but, but you can tell a lot more stories if you're like, should it be this or should it be this? Should it be a podcast? Should it be a narrative? So it really opens up. I mean, the film I'm writing right now takes place in um, Siberia in 1952 through 1990, and it's a true story. Could not be told as a doc, but as a narrative, it's great. So, so yeah, I mean, I want to continue to do both, for sure. I just, th I just think different stories need different mediums, and that's what I've really, really learned. And instead of shutting the door, I can sort of walk down the hall and see if there's a movie there. So unfortunately, we're running out of time, but just one lady asked a question. What was the reaction of the family members? Maybe we can close with that. Um, I'm very happy because uh, for many, many years, never can talk about my life, my sexuality with my family. My mom saw the movie couple months ago. She's very happy. She approved all my <laughs> life. He's proud, he loves Gerardo, and she's very happy with all of these 20 years. Bravo, bravísimo a todos, eh? felicidades otra vez, thank you all. Please, if you like this movie, tell your friends to see it, tweet about it, TikTok about it, Facebook about it, and please support local cinema, independent film is on its knees. We need you to come to the theaters. Thank you so much. Thank you.